Hey, welcome to Cook with Jake and Joy, and I'm flying solo today. It's kind of sad. I'm without Jake, and I'm making a recipe. I'm here. You're here. I know you're here. You're always here. You're so funny. You're like, can't do the show without me. I know I can't do the show without you. How would I? How would I film myself? It's crazy. Anyway, we're in season seven of our cooking show, and it's so fun. What's been fun about this season is that we've been making a lot of recipes that we've never made before. And we've been making things that kind of challenge us and push us outside the box. We had a couple things that didn't turn out so well, a couple things that really did. But I've been wanting to make Ethiopian food for a while. There's an Ethiopian restaurant down on this, just down the street from us, and my husband knows the guy who owns it pretty well. His wife is Ethiopian, and every Saturday and Sunday, she makes Ethiopian food, largely vegetarian. I think it's all vegetarian. And I love the teff, the, the little pancake that goes underneath it. And I was, Jake was reading about it. And teff is actually a, a really high source of protein. And a lot of Ethiopian runners use it as like 25% of their protein requirement, which I think is crazy. Have you had Ethiopian food? I have. I love it. Yeah. And I love how it comes out and then you just roll it up. Now, one thing I did find out is that a lot of Ethiopian places mix the teff with flour, with wheat flour. And so it's not actually gluten free. I'm outraged. Right? Yes, I know. So we are making, we're making real teff. I, I had to, you have to like let it sit. Or for it depends on how hot it is. This has been sitting for two days, and you can see it's bubbling, so it's fermented, and so it's ready to go. But before I start that, I want to get the the ingre the inside of it um, going. So there's several different things that you can put on top of the teff. What have you had on yours? Oh, I don't remember. Onions, not vegetables. Yeah, they it's they usually have vegetables. They have some meats too, but. Usually it's vegetables. So the place that we go to has like a chickpea dish, they have an eggplant dish, they have a potato dish, and they have a lentil dish. And we're gonna make the lentil dish today. Oh, lentils, I should have said lentils. Yeah, you should have said lentils. Ah. Yeah, so I've, I've been heating up some um, coconut oil. Now it, it asks for three quarters of a cup of coconut oil. I think that's too much. I don't want to put that much oil in it. So I just put, um, I put about a quarter of a cup and we're gonna add one and a half cups of chopped onions to the, to the uh, pan. And we're gonna let that cook for about, it says eight minutes. So I think it really wants them to get soft. And I'll put a cover on them. And that should help. Turn up the heat a little bit. And then we'll get everything else ready. So we're gonna be using, so we've got the yellow onions, which onions are really high in quercetin, which is great for so many things. Also high in sulfur. In fact, every time I take the cover off, I can smell the sulfur. And these are things that are really, really great for you. Um, but we're also gonna be using some ginger root. And ginger root does amazing things for your digestion, um, does amazing things for your memory. Ginger is just a great, great, great product. And I'm using this grater, which is really intended to make cheese, um, to grate like Parmesan. And it's probably not the best for this, but it asks for puree ginger, pureed. And this, this really does puree it. So on the other side, you can see like how it's just coming out like a, a, a paste. Do you see that? And it asks for a tablespoon of that. So I'm gonna do this whole piece of ginger. Ginger's always tricky for me because I get my fingernails caught. Um, it's probably better to like, you can buy ginger already grated, but I'm just such a stickler on not grating stuff and not cutting it up before you're gonna eat it because the antioxidant levels are so much higher when you wait for it to, um, to, to do it right before you're gonna eat it. So I'm gonna do that down to a nub and then we're gonna add, we're gonna add that and we're going to add the um, we're going to add the the spices first, which is really interesting. I've never done that before, and it calls for a lot of spice. This is called a, uh, a berbere spice, and it has in it it's got paprika, coriander, cayenne, cardamom, allspice, ginger, garlic, turmeric, black pepper, cumin, salt, cloves, fenugreek cinnamon, nutmeg, and I just think that's amazing. Like all of those things are so high in antioxidants that this is gonna be amazing for us. So we're gonna add that to the onion mixture along with um, some ginger that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm doing now and also two uh, teaspoons of garlic that I've already pre-chopped. So we're gonna add that all to the pan. Come with me. Okay, and we're gonna add the garlic and this all of the spice. It's a it's a, a half of a cup of spice, which is crazy. And after you do that, then you add the lentils, which I think is a really interesting way to do it. I, you know, usually you'd think that you'd add the lentils first and then add the rest of it, right? Let me just stir that up a little bit. 
Wow. You know, I, do you think they're ever going to have videos that have a, a, the ability to smell? I was going to do a movie theater that had that before. You did? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they would pump in certain smells to correspond to whatever is happening in the movie. Now I see, I'm seeing why they have you use more oil because this is kind of like kind of clunky. But I think once we add, start adding the liquid, it'll get it'll get less clunky. But I see, I see why they had that much um, oil in it now. Okay, so on top of that, we are going to add um, we're going to add the lentils and then three cups of water and some fine sea salt. So I'm adding that now. We'll cook these in the in with the spices. So that's one cup of lentils. Lentils are so great for you. Um, they reduce the risk of heart disease. They're anti-inflammatory. Um, the polyphenols that are in them can actually stop cell growth, especially in cancer patients, um, cancerous skin cells, and it also helps to lower blood pressure. So they're an amazing, amazing, amazing food. And you know, it just goes in with that whole idea of the G-bombs that we talk about all the time, Dr. Furman's. Uh, idea of having greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, um, berries, and seeds every day. Like those are kind of like the minimum that you should be having. Okay, so that is going nicely. And then we're going to add three cups of water. And this is a one and a half cup. So I'm going to fill it twice. I'm kind of excited about this. I'm nervous about making the teff. That's going to be the kind of the more challenging part. Have you ever made anything with teff before? No. Never. I've tried, and I've had this now. This is the third season that I have intended to make Ethiopian food. So I keep buying the ingredients and not making it. This is interesting. It's really, can you smell that? Not from over here. You can't? It's really, really, really um, aromatic. Super aromatic. I don't know much about Ethiopia. I would, I would enjoy learning more about it. Do you know much about Ethiopia? Never been. Because you're such a runner, I would think that you would know about it. Even if you don't, know, even if you haven't been there, you might know something about it. It's intimidating. They're too fast. Yeah, they are so fast. They are so fast. Okay, so that's three cups. So we're gonna let that um, cook while we make the teff. So crossing my fingers that it all turns out right. I'm gonna cover that. I'm move this pan. Move this over. So I'm going to use a big pan like this to make the teff in. And all I did to get this, uh, to do this, it was so easy. You just take, I took a one and a half cups of ground teff and two cups of water, mix it up. It makes a, a, like almost like a thin pancake batter. And then you leave it covered with a dish towel um, until it bubbles and it's turned sour. That sounds terrible, but that's what you're supposed to do. And then you're supposed to um, add salt just a little bit at a time. And it says until you can taste it, but I don't know. I'm not like crazy about tasting sour, sour um, uh, bread dough. Are you? Sound no, it doesn't sound great. So I'm going to mix that up. And then we're going to use coconut oil to get it to make a pancake. So let's cross our fingers and hope and hope that it works. They call this injera, an Ethiopia flat bread. I just call it teff. And when you're in a restaurant, they, they do just refer to it. You've heard it called, just referred to as teff too, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah, which is interesting. But they're calling it, they're calling it injera. So they must know what it's called, right? It's their stuff. All right, so I'm going to add some coconut oil to the bottom of the pan. And they must really love coconut oil in Ethiopia. I don't know, but three quarters of a cup is a lot. Okay, let's try that out. This would be a lot easier if Jake was here because she would be telling me what to do. And that makes it easier. At least okay. she'd be making you laugh. At least she'd be making me laugh. That's right. You can take up the mantle for her, though. Okay, so we're going to add, a. it says to add a third of it, but I think I'm just going to do enough to cover the, pan, the bottom of the pan. So let's just see what that takes. I want to make it, I want to get it really hot. Do you make pancakes, Derek? I do, on the griddle. Do you? And the, and the griddle has to be really hot before you add the batter, right? 300 degrees. Is that what you do? Yes. How do you tell the temperature? I got a little uh, temperature gauge on the side of it. Really? The, side of the large griddle has like a little thing you stick it inside and tell the temperature to go. Huh, that's interesting. So you're a serious pancake maker, it sounds like. How often do you make pancakes whenever the boys are with you? Yeah, I mean, we probably have pancakes three times a week. Really? 
Wow. The griddle is the best because you can cook anything on it. Uh -huh. Eggs and pancakes and sausages. All and, and is the griddle like an electric griddle or yes. is it? Oh, okay. Interesting. I, my mom had one of those when I was growing up, but I've, I've never used that. We have a griddle in the middle of our stove here, and I use that quite a bit. Griddle in the middle? Yeah, a griddle in the middle. So now what you're supposed to do is get little bubbles are supposed to form, and that's how you know it's done. So I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of anxiously waiting to see what happens. I don't think this is like watching the pot boil. And you only cook it on one side. You don't cook both sides, which I find fascinating. Yeah, so cook, it says cook briefly until holes form in the injera and the edges lift from the pan. Do not let it brown and don't flip it over. It is only supposed to be cooked on one side. Remove and let cool. Place plastic wrap or foil between the successive pieces so they don't stick together. Isn't that cool? Wow. I hope Very it works. Uh-oh. Okay. It's, yeah. It is. Wow. But the edges haven't lifted all the way yet. Let me show you what it looks like. Interesting, huh? Yeah. But it's not quite, I don't think it's quite done yet. Because I can't really lift it off the pan yet. I think it's got to cook a little bit more than that. This must be super easy to make because you can imagine that they probably make it like on campfires and stuff, you know? There's probably a technique that goes to it that we... we that we don't know about. Ooh, it's nummy. It's got a sour, a sour taste to it. I like it. I like it, I like it. But I need to be able to get it out of the pan. This is going to be the, the challenging part. Okay, you want to see my... Okay, I, I don't think this is quite what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> oh, it looks like the pad pie. Yeah, oh, shut up. Okay, so here's the deal, you guys. Half of this recipe turned out great, and half of it totally did not turn out great. The lentils are awesome. They're really, really spicy. So I would recommend that you use probably a half of the amount of spice that it calls for or use more lentils. Um, they, they turned out great. They look beautiful, but they are really, really spicy. Now I know from having Ethiopian food that um, the teff really cuts down on the spice of whatever you're eating. So if the teff had actually turned out, that would be the case. But I would have this probably over some rice and I think it'll be really good. This, however, is how my injera pancake turned out. That Second, doesn't look right. It does not look right. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm, I'm going to go down to the Ethiopian restaurant that I, that I eat at on the weekends, and I'm going to find out how she actually makes them. Um, there's got to be a secret to it. It tastes like it's supposed to taste, but um, it clearly it does not look the way that it's supposed to look. Huh. So, did you drop it on the floor? I did not drop it on the floor. I know you're an expert pancake maker. I am going to figure this out because I think that this is, I think that this will be an easy recipe to make. And I would, I mean, how cool would it be to have Ethiopian food at your house? I love Ethiopian food. Yeah, I think it would be really cool. And I mean, I like going out for it, but I think it's kind of neat that you can make it at home. So I am going to, I'm going to crush this thing and stay tuned for season eight, where I'm going to come back and I am going to make an injera pancake. That's all I've got for this episode. We'll see you next week for another episode of Cook with Jake and Joy. Bye.